Hey folks, good to see you. <laughs> so from 2013 to 2015, I produced a talk entertainment sports show for NC State Athletics. Then from 2017 to 2020, uh, I made a docu-series for NC State Athletics, both for their football and men's basketball programs. I really loved making those shows. It was a lot of fun to put together. It was definitely a growth period for me, for sure. And I haven't made them in a while, but something I wanted to do was I wanted to provide some director's commentary on all of the docu-series episodes I made during my three season run. So, that's what we're doing here today. Hopefully these commentaries will provide a little bit of insight, a little bit of information, maybe even a bit of an education on what it takes to put together a sports docu-series. Also for me, it's fun to look back and realize how much I've grown. Trust me, I made a lot of mistakes making the show, but I did a lot of cool stuff, if I do say so myself, on the show. Granted, I am not Steven Spielberg. I do not have decades and decades worth of experience, but for a lot of people just starting out who wanna make sports documentaries, this might be helpful. So here we go. Season one, episode one of One with Wolfpack Football. Hope you enjoy. All right, so here we go. First uh, director's commentary for One with Wolfpack Football. Very first episode. I love that opening shot. I love a, I love a good sunrise shot, you know? Looking all pretty with the wolves and such. Yeah, it's important to start off, I think, all these um, episodes with just really. Sorry, I'm distracted. That the lighting in this interview is terrible. <laughs> that's um, that's on me for sure. Uh, first learning how to do dramatic lighting. Um, that's what comes out. I'm a little dissatisfied with that, but I like to say that you know. Nowhere to go but up, right? But it's the content that I was really um, looking forward to. So all these interviews that take place during the black, uh, during this black background, this kind of like stage setup, uh, we conducted those before the season even started. So we did all of them. So you'll see an interview segment from that setup in each episode um, for this season. Um so yeah, this was the very first episode still getting uh, my sea legs when it comes to making a, a documentary series of my own creation. Um, I was inspired by the Netflix show Last Chance You, which came out the year um, before we did the season. So that really inspired me to take a different approach to a coach's show, one that I had not seen um, done a lot in the collegiate space. Um, so this graphic intro, uh, I made myself at After Effects, my attempts at After Effects. It's a, it's an effect called double exposure where you see the cutout of the player and the video underneath it. Um, I was inspired by watching the HBO show True Detective. That gave me the kind of the, the idea for it and the whole deal behind it was showcasing that these players were more than just players. They were people um, and they represented more than just themselves. So yeah, here we are. Our first episode, we called it One Pack, One Goal. Seems fitting because the show called the show is called One with Full Back Football, and it's our very first episode. So we typically start filming these shows, the, ver the first, uh, first episode of each season. We start filming in July, um, as evidenced by that graphic you saw during July 28th. And the tough part is with shows like this, typically a bunch of footage is just filmed weeks after weeks after weeks, maybe even months. And then it's all edited afterward. For this show, we have to turn it around normally inside of six days. So there's not a lot we can do to kind of craft the story as much as we want after the fact. We have to really go with the flow with what is having, what is happening in the moment. So a lot of times what we do take care of in those pre-season interviews um, with Coach Doran, as you've seen so far, are hypotheticals that could come up during the season, as well as generic, um, generic theme-related stuff. Um, anything that could be, that isn't game-specific, that isn't condition-specific. These were some of my favorite moments of 
Coach Doran trolling the players with their lack of classic rock knowledge. <laughs> that was AJ Cole, the punter, now for the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. You'll see a bunch of NFL talent uh, throughout this show. The big thing, too, is not just talking about the end, you know, it's how do we get from where we are to where we want to be, the plan in place. And that's setting measurable goals. You know, I think you have to be able to measure if we want to be top three in the league. In sports, so Coach Dorn was never a fan of the old uh, of the old coaches show, the one where you walk into a studio, you sit down, you analyze film, you talk about the game that happened because he's at that the time we film it, we usually film it the Sunday afterward. He's done. He's moved on to the next game. So we do what we can to film everything ahead of time. So he's not tired of talking about the subject matter already. And I think by doing that, A, he, uh, oh, there's a lot of drink wits. Now the, uh, he's the head coach for University of Missouri right now. Um, coach Drink is a super interesting guy. Um, incredibly smart, really funny. Um, loves to quote the office um, all the time. <laughs> so during, during this first episode, we actually filmed with, I think, three or four different cameras, mainly because I had no idea what I was doing. I was trying to get the right look for the show. I was trying to figure out what cameras could serve what purposes, and I think I was just overcomplicating stuff. So... It might, I don't know if you notice, but for me, whenever Coach Drink is moving around subtly in his interview setup, there's a little bit of a blur. Um, that is due to a frame rate mix up within, um, within the editing process. We filmed the entire show in 30 frames per second, but we filmed his interview in 24 frames per second by mistake. Um, so we edit an Avid Media Composer for the season. And the way it interprets different frame rates is tries to match as best as can. Um, so that's why it looks a little different. And like going back to these cameras, like that camera right there, that's a Sony FS700, really good high frame rate camera. We attach normally a EF70-200 to onto that and film at 120 during practice and just get some really cool slow-mo shots. Like that's the only use for that camera normally um, when we used it. So stuff like this is shot on a handheld Panasonic P2 camera, which I don't think anybody uses P2 anymore um, because they record these cards, these metal cards that do not hold a lot of media um, because the file sizes are just huge. And they have a really complicated media structure. But that's technical stuff you're probably not too interested in, so let's get back, <laughs> let's get back to this stuff. Good protection. Good. Get to it, get to it, get to it, get to it. Get All to these it. coaches on staff are really good at balancing the fun with the strict. Like all these coaches are on the players' butts if they're doing something wrong, if they do something great, they're super encouraging, which I think, you know, working around coaches for the better part of a decade, you see a lot of different coaching approaches. And I think that's the... The best approach, the most effective approach from what I've they're seen. They're high and they're lofty and um, they're big. It's we a dope hat. Dreamers around here, and that's what we're going to continue to do. This is interesting watching these uh, eight dudes try to move that. Two, or seven <laughs> I love this bit. These guys are trying to move a goalpost. It's like eight guys. All football equipment managers, student managers, some of the hardest working people in sports. I love getting all those like interactions that nobody really sees or nobody thinks to pay attention to. You know, people are focused on, okay, what are the coaches doing? Okay, what are the players doing? I like showing the behind the scenes stuff, man. It adds a lot of character. It adds a lot of... I think it adds appreciation to the program. No matter what the program is, everybody who is out on this field deserves recognition for the hard work that they're doing, regardless of if they have a jersey or a title. 
So the first episode of each season is not a game episode. It's always a camp episode. And usually we have an entire month to make that episode, which is really cool. Um, it's a nice ease into the ease into the pool of production before we start to have to crank out episodes inside six days. That's what we do. It's not personal, but if you want to be a champion, you better be able to take the criticism. I love miking all these coaches up. We get a lot of really awesome sound bites and really clear, clear audio, um, which is important for these behind the scenes features. That's a really dark shot. I had a lot of trouble with lighting my first season. Um, I'm not a director of photography. I, something I needed to get better at after this first season, I really realized it after we filmed that first interview that you see. As moody as it looks, you know, just, I got to get better at that. And you'll see it every episode this season. And I'll point it out and I'll be like, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> What's really important for these types of shows is access. Um, I was lucky enough to have almost unlimited, actually not even almost. I was, I had unlimited access to this program, uh, inside meeting rooms, both coaches, film rooms and player meetings. Um, every practice, micing people up, locker room, all that stuff. So this is coach Hux. Coach Hux is a guy who I always loved interviewing because the pol polarity, <clears throat> the polarity of his vocal range, I will say. He is a very loud, yelling individual on the field, but he does always say, pay attention to what I'm saying, not how I'm saying it. But when you interview him, he's soft-spoken, he's quiet, very contemplative, but you can tell there's a lot of passion um, when he's answering your questions. Um, one of my favorite favorite episodes ever um, features a really good interview with him. It's either in season two or three. I can't remember. So for this first episode, we really wanted to focus on the program because this was the first episode of this new show. Um, obviously, Coach Doran and most of his staff had been around for, I think, four years at this point. But we really wanted to showcase what they stood for. So outside of that, covering camp stuff. Um, camp is long, man. It's weeks long. It's hot as hell. We wanted to show the struggle. Coach Hux is here. He's talking about the sun is their friend. The sun. The sun. He's our opponent's enemy. He's our friend. Kind of a cool attitude to have. We embrace him. <laughs> yeah, embracing the heat, man. The hotter, the better. I, I, I like hot weather myself personally, and uh, and every day that we can go out and practice and have that have our friend there. So my main camera for the majority of the show, um, past this first in, in in this episode and past this episode, uh, is a Panasonic GH4. Um, it is a budget 4K camera. When I bought it, it was like two grand. It, sh it shot 4K, which was perfect for what I needed, both for game action and for interviews. So that you can, you'll notice in those interviews, it, there's two different framings. There's, there's a wide and there's a tight. And uh, that's because that camera shooting at 4K allows you to do that. This interview um, was filmed with two different cameras, um, a GH4 and a camera I cannot remember, <laughs> but one has a tight lens, um, has a 70 to 200 and the other has a 35 on it. So we punch in. So we do this to add variety um, and not just to add variety for variety's sake because it keeps things from getting stale, but I cut to close-ups and I cut to wides with purpose. Um, the general rule is if you want to focus on emotion, you go tight. If you want to focus on kind of a an establishing or even sometimes a comic relief, you go wide because body language is funny. Whether you know it or not, you'll figure it out. Good job. 
Come on, man. Be accountable in there. I feel really good today. I love moments. I love moments like this coming up. How y'all feel? Great. Really good today. How you feel, Darren? Great. Really good. Feel really good today. Here we go. Get a little bounce. Get a little bounce there with me. Let's go, man. Go. Get a little swag. A lot of times I'm trying not to laugh while I'm filming when something goofy's happening. Ah, come on. Ah, 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 ah. You're not doing anything. Stand up. We're going to ball today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who loves football? Yeah. Over the hill. Down the hill. That player shouting right there is Bradley Chubb, currently a defensive lineman for the Miami Dolphins. Football. Football. I love football. football. I want to be able to take a group of guys and develop them to be the best men that they can be to be, be the best. I think a lot of people don't understand that be the best men that they can be beyond. The people you're seeing on this camera, the people you're seeing on the field, they're more than just a coach, they're more than just a player, they're people. Um, theoretically, most people know that, but a lot of times when it's a game day and you have a specific allegiance, you forget that. Um, you forget that they're more than just one thing. And knowing that and filming all of this stuff, I personally, you know, I was never, never an athlete or anything like that, but I always liked sports and I like the competitive aspect. I like the pageantry, but what I really learned to love more than any of that while doing this was discovering how sport can mature an individual um, with the right coaching, with the right approaches. Uh, these, these people can become really great, just really great people. Um, oh, hey, that's me down in the corner next to Coach Doran. I'm, I'm filming from my angle, even though it doesn't look like it right now. My camera is a little lower. <laughs> Yeah, I really like seeing these moments where the coaches try to instill just good human values into these people. You don't want them to treat you poorly, right? Don't disrespect somebody. Don't pick on somebody. Don't bully somebody. Honestly, I'd rather do a whole show about this stuff than film a, than, than show a game. Not that I don't enjoy a game. It's a lot of fun, especially when we win. <laughs> That's Justin Jones. I believe he's with the Bears now. And here's the thing about being on a team. If one guy is that way, what is that person's perception of everybody in the room? That's how football players are. On the, oh, the Backyard Bistro. Not been there in a long time. Probably since I, probably since I filmed this. <laughs> So they used to film the uh, weekly coaches radio show at this restaurant, downtown Raleigh. Nope, not downtown Raleigh. What am I talking about? It's across the street from the stadium. There's the man himself, Tony Haynes. Tony Haynes is my uh, producing partner for the show. He uh, interviewed most of he interviewed most of the interviews with Coach Doran. He was conducting the interviews uh, both and with him and the assistant coaches as well as most of the players. Um, Unless he was unavailable, then I stepped in. But Tony's the master. So they did this live radio show at this restaurant. Yeah, there's uh, there's Coach Doran. There's Mark Thomas, radio personality. Now runs his own ad agency. No, I was a lot heavier when I played. Oh, okay. But That's something to be said for that. My goal was to get back to the weight I started as. Now, sometimes I need some filler for a show. Um, I hate to think of it that way, but sometimes I'm editing everything and I realize, oh man, I'm minutes short. I need I need to add something. Um, and I'm like, oh okay, I'll go film a radio show, thinking it's filler. But once I get there and I start filming, there's actually some really good stuff that I just before I film, don't give enough credit for it. But during this is really good. Um, so you'll see in this segment that they're, uh, Tony and Mark are interviewing walk-ons, former walk-ons with, uh, with NC State that eventually get awarded scholarships. Here's some footage of uh, some guys getting some scholarships. It's Brady Bodine right there. Filming stuff like that gets me choked up, man. Like, these kids work super hard and they're doing it because they 
love the game. They're paying their own way. And then to then be rewarded with that, that bill of relief, you know, that, that reward of like, Oh, I don't have to worry about paying for school for this year or the rest of my collegiate career because I worked my butt off and now I'm rewarded, you know, with free education. And all this was before NIL stuff. Um, and seeing that stuff go into effect is really, I think, cool for a lot of these, a lot of these student athletes. I believe when I was editing this episode, I realized that I used duplicate footage of Coach Strink in the beginning and at the end, and I was so mad at myself <laughs> that I, that's when I realized, oh, I need more stuff, so I went and filmed the radio show. There's Gavin. Gavin is now a coach on staff um, at NC State. He uh, suffered crazy injury and came back, broke his leg. And there he is just being a fucking boss, man. And he ends up with a scholarship as well, which is really dope. What are you doing, okay, as a... Uh that suffering in silence that you're doing on your own, that, that overtime, that extra work. Normally, the way each episode works is the first segment is kind of laying the groundwork for what this episode is about. And the last segment is kind of wrapping things up. That seems, you know, kind of obvious to say, <laughs> but having just having that structure in mind that that's what you want to do if you want to make a show like this, you have to kind of keep that in mind because if you're just making a show, if you're just putting down clips and it's kind of random, it's not going to feel cohesive. It's not going to have enough meaning as if you plan everything out as much as you can. Like everything has to have a purpose. At least that should be your goal. You know, sometimes you fall flat. I've done it plenty of times. Um, but at least having that mission in your head that idea in your head of making everything with purpose is going to increase the quality of what you make as well as you're going to feel better about it too. So I believe with <laughs> Nick Lacey's about to get a scholarship right here. I'm going I'm to stay quiet. The reason I say that is because he does it with his own money. But you know what? He ain't got to do it with his own money. Love moments like that. But for a lot of this stuff, I am not in the room because this is my first year doing it and I didn't know where to be, when to be. I didn't know what kind of stuff would be covered in meetings. Sometimes events like this aren't decided until right before. And I was kind of out of the loop for a little bit. And it wasn't like nobody was ignoring me or anything like that. I just wasn't pushing for that information. But the more I made the show, the more I realized there were a lot more important moments than where I just thought I should be, that I needed to rely, oh, there's my name, <laughs> that I needed to rely on the staff, I needed to rely on players, I needed to rely on a lot of people to, um, including everyone in the credits, to kind of help me out with what they feel I should capture. Um, because I can't be everywhere at once. I don't know everything, you know? This show might be my idea, but it's a it's a team effort. I love a good slow-mo footage of grass, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so yeah, that is the first episode of One with Wolfpack Football. Man, thank y'all so much for watching and listening. I hope you got a little bit of insight into my process of making a show like this. Hopefully in more episodes to come, you learn a little bit more, gain a little bit more of appreciation of what it takes to put together a show like this. It doesn't matter if it's mine or if it's somebody else's. But before you go, I wanna know if you have any questions. So if you do, leave them in the comments below. Or you can reach out to me on Twitter and Instagram at Tay D. Adams. I hope y'all stay tuned to more of the director's commentary I'll be putting out. I'll try to keep it semi-regular for you. Um, but anyways, thank you again so much for watching and listening. If you wanna help support more of the stuff I'm making, go ahead and check out the Patreon link in the description below. It'd be really cool if you became a patron. 
But if you can't swing it, totally cool. The least you can do is like or subscribe or share, whatever you feel like doing. But again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.